idea on the Dingo Scout car, a legend in its own right. One of the requirements for the new armoured force that was being developed in the late 1930s was for a light 4x4 scout car for general duties and reconnaissance. The design was originally put forward by BSA, British Small Arms, Motorcycle Company, but they were taken over by Daimler Car Company and an order of 172 vehicles was placed with the new company in 1939. The Mark I was a 4x4 open top vehicle which only had armoured protection for the crew at the front of the vehicle and had proved to be underpowered. The Mark one a incorporated all-round armoured protection for the crew and a bigger and more powerful engine. It also had a folding metal roof. These Mark I vehicles had four-wheel steering and this proved to be a liability in the hands of unskilled drivers. The steering was changed to the front wheels only in the Mark II, which made it considerably easier to handle. The basic layout would hardly change during the course of the vehicle's production. The two-man crew sat side by side in an open-topped armoured box, whilst the crew compartment only had a folding metal roof for protection. The engine was at the rear. The Mark III was the heaviest version of the scout car, but was still well within the limits of the vehicle. The metal roof was done away with, as it was hardly ever used operationally by the crews. The engine was also given waterproof ignition system. So I imagine that's the one you mostly see at the shows, the Mark III. The vehicle was armed with a Bren machine gun, or sometimes even a Vickers machine gun, which is quite surprising given how small this armoured car actually was. For all its service history, there were a number of crew modifications on the armament. The Daimler Scout car proved to be a very reliable and rugged vehicle and had the distinction of being one of the few vehicles to be in service at the start of World War II and to remain in service well after the war had finished, with 6,626 of all marks being produced. This car could be found in most British and Commonwealth units, even in, in units that were not supposed to have it on strength. Mark III specifications. Country UK, entered service 1939, crew 2, weight 3.2 tonnes, dimensions, length 10 feet 5 inches, height 4 feet 11 inches, width 5 feet 8 inches, main armament, Bren, light machine gun and secondary 303 Lee Enfield rifles. Not too sure where you would put them in there, but there you go. Maximum armour, 1.18 inches. Power plant, Daimler 6. Cylinder petrol engine, developing 55 horsepower. And maximum speed, 55 miles per hour, range 200 miles. <coughs> so the Dingo was in use from 1940 to 1974. So honestly, that is quite a history. So it was used in World War II, the Malayan Emergency, the Portuguese Colonial War, and the Turkish Invasion of Cyprus. I am very surprised with that. And of course the Italians and Americans did copy this design. You have the Ford Lynx Mark I, which is on display at the Israeli Tank Museum, and you also have the Lancia armoured car which I have a model of and it looks exactly the same so the non Daimler versions the Ford Lynx Scout car a closely related vehicle the Lynx Scout car or Ford Scout car Mark 1 was produced by Ford Canada in Windsor Ontario the Lynx designed so it was actually a dingo hull and a chassis was fitted to give it four-wheel drive whilst the engine was much more powerful and the gearbox and suspension were inferior. The Type entered service in 1943, the Mark I and Mark II. The Mark II had a strengthened chassis, no roof and extra storage. So the Italian armoured car, another Dingo clone, and I honestly can't say the Italian name but uh, I will pop it up on screen was developed by Lancia in 1943-1944. 129 cars were built. They were employed by both the Germans and or 
SI forces. Now there is actually an old book to do with British armoured cars in German service that I've got. It's from around 1990 and it does show Mark 1 Dingo in service with the Germans and I believe it's near Sevastopol escorting a supply convoy and a few were exported to South Africa which of course I wouldn't be that surprised. They are also produced in large numbers for the Commonwealth patrols during the Malayan emergency and in Vietnam. One ex-South Vietnamese Canadian Lynx was found on an installation used as a Liston vehicle by the 4th Cavalry Regiment in the mid-1970s. So that's actually very surprising. And then, of course, the Turkish used them, Portugal and Sri Lanka. But, of course, they were um, a very cheap vehicle to produce. And, of course, many reenactors use them now. And there's quite a few about, of course, on the shore circuit. So, yeah, I thought they would have been operated by more countries. I am quite surprised that they weren't. But there we are, that's the history of the Dame Ladingo armoured car, one of my all-time favourite armoured cars. It's quite small, like myself, quite compact, but it could go everywhere. So, good on Daimler for producing it, and uh, it certainly filled that gap that the Commonwealth forces needed. And before Brian from Brian's Diecast puts a comment saying, have you got any models, Andy? Yes, I have. The by Oxford Diecast, I have about 11 of them really really well detailed models they are of the mark one with the roof but i guess in 176 scale they couldn't do anything else because the steering wheel and everything the seats would have to be that small but yeah really really nice models 